In this screencast, we're going to look at a simple example of chain growth polymerization and then look at applying the steady state approximation to the active centers in the reaction to determine how the rate of reaction depends on monomer concentration and initiator concentration. So I've indicated here the first step, the initiation step, where an initiator breaks up into two radicals, it has one pair at electron, and the rate of decomposition of the initiator is going to be a rate constant for decomposition times the concentration of the initiator. So the symbol in parentheses will indicate concentration. Once we have this active species, it can react with the monomer, and the monomers are present in high concentration relative to the concentration of the active center, and we can start the process of initiating the chain. The rate of initiation is going to be then rate constant for initiation, the concentration of these active centers, and the concentration of our monomer. Then this active center will continue to react with monomers to make longer chains and in general what we're going to have is R sub J where J is the number of monomers reacts with a monomer to make R sub J plus 1 and this is still active. This is propagation of the reaction where we have the rate then of propagation is the propagation rate constant. The concentration of all of these active centers times the monomer concentration. And now the final step in this simple mechanism is when two of these growing chains, these radicals, Rj and Rk, collide to make a polymer. So this is a polymer and is no longer reactive. This is referred to as a termination step. Terminate the growing polymer chain. The rate of termination then is a rate constant for termination. Concentration of radicals. And what we're going to do is apply the steady state approximation to this primary radical R sub C that's formed from our initiator. And so the steady state approximation says the rate R sub C is equal to zero. Namely, we're at steady state as fast as we make R sub C, we react it away. So we make it in the first step, initiation step, and because of stoichiometry, there's a factor of two there. And then we use it up in the second step. So rate of formation, the rate that we now react it away and this net rate is zero which means we can calculate the concentration of this primary radical. Now what we're going to do is add another factor in here for the initiator efficiency. F is the initiator efficiency, some number less than one. Everything else is the same in the equation. And this initiator efficiency corresponds to the fact that some of these initiator radicals are lost due to recombination, scavenging, and therefore F is less than 1. So our rate of initiation then, which is Ki, the primary radical concentration, and the monomer concentration, can be written as 2 times F times the rate constant for decomposition of the initiator and the initiator concentration. And the steady state approximation says that the rate of initiation equals the rate of termination. Namely, this says there's no increase or decrease in the number of radicals that are present and available for the propagation step. As fast as we form them, we lose them by termination, so we're at steady state. This is the steady state approximation. And so substituting in the rate of initiation on the left, 
rate of termination on the right, I can solve for the concentration of these active centers. Of course, what we're interested in is the rate of polymerization. So the rate of polymerization is going to be the rate that the monomer reacts, since essentially all the monomer is involved in a propagation step. And this is using what's called the long chain approximation, assuming that these steps for propagation take place many times for one initiation step. Namely, we make a long chain with a lot of monomer units in the polymer. And so this means we can write the rate of propagation as this rate constant for propagation. It's the concentration of the radicals and the concentration of the monomers. And we just calculate the concentration of the radicals. And so we've calculated here then the rate of polymerization by substituting in the radical concentration into this equation. And we can see the rate of polymerization is first order in monomer concentration, but it's only half order in the initiator concentration. And as we increase the rate constant for termination, the rate of polymerization is going to decrease. We increase the rate constant for decomposition of initiator, the rate of polymerization will increase.